only one week of school left until glorious summer vacation. The bell rings and it's lunchtime. You grab your brown bag and head to the cafeteria. As you start to pull items out, your heart sinks. Your mom must have read that latest article on feeding kids healthy snacks. Celery, chickpeas, you dig deeper. Tofu? Ugh. You look around the table and spy what your classmates have brought, and you start brainstorming your best negotiating tactics. It's a long shot, but you've got to do something. You grab some tofu, spread it on the celery, and dab a couple of chickpeas on top. You take a deep breath, turn to your friend and ask, You tried that? You tried that? The Snacking Podcast, where we try snacks. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. Howdy! Nick Geiger. Hello. And today we are trying out some kids' lunchbox snacks. Um, guys, when you were a kid, were you a hot lunch kid or a brown bag kid? I had those hot, sexy lunches. No, it was definitely um, definitely brown bag for me every day. Where it was, And it was like the exact same thing every day. It was like peanut butter and honey sandwich and, you know, maybe like a bag of chips or Reese's Cups or something like that. And a lot of sugar, basically. <laughs> You're eating Reese's Cubs for your lunch. You got a sandwich and candy. That's it. <laughs> Pretty yeah, yeah. I think that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of explains a lot. That just my lunch every day was just like a gallon of sugar, basically. <laughs> and now here I am, a fat sack of shit. <laughs> I was uh, brown bagging it for a long time, or lunch boxing it, I should say. I had some old lunch boxes. I can't remember what was on the outside, but I'm sure it was something stupid. And then uh, I think when I got to middle school, like middle school into high school, my mom just started giving me the hot lunch tickets. So then I would eat the school lunch. But mo- like, I remember getting hot lunch sometimes as a kid, but it was kind of 50 50. And then eventually it became all hot lunch. Yeah, I was probably 80% brown bag just because I was moderately picky as a kid. And so there was only of the six or seven hot lunch options, there was like two that I ever wanted to eat. It was like the, the pizza and then right. something else. Um, so let me ask you guys this question. It's happened to me the other day. So you're going into a store yeah. and there's two doors, right? So most stores, there's one that gets you into like sort of a standing area and then another one that gets you into the store. So let's say there's someone walking behind you. Oh, you mean the, the two doors are consecutive, not like side by <laughs> side and one of them's a one fake One just door leads to an indiscriminate standing area. <laughs> it just comes no into reason. a dead end. <laughs> There's two doors. <laughs> Which one do you take? Um, so <laughs> One of them is Mark Fuckwitz. Enter here. <laughs> so the you, let's say you walk right in behind somebody. They hold the door for you. They don't hold it to let you walk in, but they take a step in, hold the door so that you can grab it. And then they continue to walk. You say thanks, right? You say, yeah, thanks. So now the next door comes. Do you say thank you again at the second door? <sighs> oh, boy. Oh You've boy. been in this situation, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. Mm, I think it depends on if I like... I, if I like the look of the person. <laughs> like, if they, if they look like what? a nice person or like hot? a friendly person or if they're hot but just if if they look like somebody that like oh this seems like a nice person then i'll i'll do it but if they if they if it, they have a look like they were they were begrudgingly holding the door for me then that motherfucker is only getting one thanks and that's it <laughs> i mean they're still being nice yeah but they have to want it <laughs> the only act that you've seen them take in their entire life was them doing something for you. So they, they're a nice person in your mind. I usually say thanks the first time, and the second time I say, oh, get the fuck out of my way, Dudley Do Right. <laughs> um, no, I say thank you twice. I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not going to make it real demonstrative. I'll just be like, thanks. You know, thanks again. Or, or just nod the second time if they can see me. Um, maybe like a high five. Let's say this, do- this store had 20 consecutive doors <laughs> how long before you stopped thanking them uh, probably as soon as i realized i was five doors in and no closer to being inside <laughs> turned around and left <laughs> I, f- I feel like after like door four you have to like run ahead of them so that now you like hold the door for you know and then you kind of like alternate and then nobody has to talk to either person i will say i get irritated i'm a pretty good door holder 
Like I will hold the door open for people and not even just like the old nudge it open. I'm, As in what makes it good? You, you keep yeah, I will like the stand by the door and hold oh, it open and let them walk holder. through. Right. I'm, he flings that shit wide. Yeah. Back. yeah. And like, <laughs> if they don't say thank you, it kind of does irritate me. Like I'm not just here for my fucking, I'm not the doorman of the store. Either tip me or yeah. thank me. And you didn't give me any money. You're doing it for thank you. I am. I wanted to get one like. So I was you're doing like, it because it's the only way that people will appreciate anything you do in your life. Well, then the tricky part is if you're at like a church or you're at like a busy restaurant, you just get stuck there. So you get stuck there holding the door and like people keep coming in and then you have to make yeah. the decision like, when is it socially acceptable for me to close the door on someone? Because then you, you so I'll look ahead if there's a space in between groups. Or like uh, maybe an ugly person, I'll be like, "Oh, quick, shut the door!" <laughs> like, because uh, I don't hold it for uggos. So, as a man, you do you feel more inclined to hold it for a woman than a man. If there's a woman coming up five steps behind you, you're more likely to hold the door. Yes. Yes. I am a chivalrous piece of shit. I will absolutely <laughs> hold the door for a woman. Women <laughs> and old man. people. Like an old person, male or female? Mm, no, just women. No. <laughs> <laughs> old people can use their walkers to prop the door open. They don't need my help. <laughs> <laughs> Novak, how about you? What kind of genteel door? What's your door operation strategy? Uh, I'm probably just an average door holder, I guess. I'm not some kind of great door holder, <laughs> lo- the likes of Nick Gagger, who's one of the no, top, no top door holders there is. Rate, rate your door holding <laughs> abilities on a scale of 1 to 10. I work, I work at a place that's about 90% women, so I feel like if there's like a fire or a door to be held, then I'm just going to be holding the thing all damn day. Like All the women have to go first. Oh, I de- I definitely had there was like a fire drill at work and there's probably like, you know, there's like a thousand people that work mm-hmm. in my building or something like that. And somehow like th- this was like two years ago, somehow I was standing there like holding the door as people were like coming out. And like after, you know, a minute or something, I'm like, oh, okay, this stream of people is never going to end. I should probably just close the door and let the rest <laughs> of these people burn, even though there wasn't actually a fire. But maybe that was my cue to start one. I don't know. I definitely like at some point somebody came out and was like, I'll take over or something. Someone should prop the door open. That's it. Like, don't you have door stops at yeah. your office? <laughs> yeah. Chad was no, the door I stop. Mean, it just, it just, it, yeah, it just became the point of like one person after another, like holding the door. All right. Here's uh, one, other, one other thing that a friend was relaying to me recently. You guys have heard of the sleep number beds, right? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Tried them out when we were looking for Okay. A so maybe you can, you had a, a story similar to this. So. Do you hold the blankets open for people coming into your bed? <laughs> if it's a woman. Rate your sleep number on a scale of one to a, ten. A woman or an old person can get on in this bed. <laughs> so, so a coworker of mine said that her and her husband went in to uh, get a sleep number. She ended up getting it. But that most of the sleep numbers now, there are so many features to them. There are like loads of add-ons you can have. It's like buying a car. Um, yeah. That the cheap, the cheapest one, just is like a very is pretty affordable now and is real like a base model. So she said that the salesman was trying to sell them on some of these features, like the back tilting up, like pushing you up, and to do that, saw they were a young couple. It was like someone in the salesman's in their forties and was saying, "Well, look, there's all kinds of different uh, positions you could do with this sleeve number, like." having the showing how the thing was pushed up like everything short of getting on the bed and like getting on all fours and being like yeah this is how you would do this right here if you <laughs> tilt the back of the bed up <laughs> so um chad is that experience similar <laughs> to what you had no not at all <laughs> we we went into the store and we lied down on one of the sleep number beds and we like almost immediately didn't like it um because i think it's like air it's like an air bed right like that's how they control the different firmness is like it something like that and Must and it, yeah and, and like you said we got we were like so overwhelmed because like oh you can get ones where only like half of it goes up and reclines or whatever and like has massage features in it and stuff and we just we just said fuck it and we went and got a tempurpedic which is what we wanted to begin with anyways now let's say let's say you were sell you were in charge of the store do you think if you put some kind of hot model in there and started talking to 
the guys about the different sexual positions that you would sell more sleep number beds because of this. <laughs> is this yeah. a sleep number or like a Hooters? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've like sort of combined now into some hybrid concept where you eat crappy wings while trying out a bed. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, you, you hit this button and something like fingers your butthole while you sleep. I mean, it's just a, it's for the sleep. It's for the sleep. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah. So wait a minute. This did your friend just slap this guy in the face? That's really kind of. It was a woman. Uh, it was a woman salesperson. Oh, okay. Which I think, if it's a man salesperson, then it's that's I mean, skeezy. It's he's so going unacceptable to jail, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But if it's a woman salesperson, either we're all in, or the man has to slap her in the face, right? Right. <laughs> that's a good point. Like the man salesperson, that's not okay. Not at all. A woman salesperson, that's sales. Cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> it's also still not okay. Right. <laughs> was there like a dummy in the bed that she was like demonstrating with? Like, all right, now he, pretend he comes over here and she's like draping it across her. Now, don't you think someone who's like 90 can get away with that, though? Like if the salesperson is 90 and is making those jokes, people think it's funny, right? funny but you're not gonna if you're your your question before was if it's a hot woman will she be selling more beds that way i don't think a 90 year old granny talking to me about that bed is gonna make me think about it this is the same one she is hot and 90 (laughs) talk to me when i'm older i guess (laughs) but is she the kind of person that i would hold a door open for because if so then it's okay (laughs) otherwise no (laughs) that is bizarre was she was she just like was she just at one point did she just go the per you know what the perfect sleep number is sixty nine <laughs> and then high fived everybody in the store. So how many? Well, they bought a bed. So I was gonna say how many beds did she buy from this? Like sixty nine beds. Sixty nine beds. <laughs> Her house house is just littered with mattresses. It's even got enough room for more than one or say two or even three or four people in the bed if that's what you're into. <laughs> the that's the perfect kind of conversation to lead into our uh children's snacks today <laughs> that we'll be eating hey that's all they get made <laughs> we're gonna be yeah. do you want to <laughs> do you want to feed your kids some barnum's animal crackers well here's where it starts by fucking on this sleep <laughs> number bed <laughs> get reproducing <laughs> and they're like here in the store I wish sleep. I wish sleep number would because they don't advertise at all. Right? Uh, seen I've it. seen it um, mm, on the radio. Yeah. They're on the radio. But I think it should just be. I think just just be Chad reading the copy. The thing you just read. This is where it gets started. <laughs> Fucking how you sleep number bed. <laughs> hey, you want to pick what kind of number you'd be comfortable with? Sure, that comes after. First, get to fucking. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chad, will you hold the back door open for them? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> no. Back All door. Right. Kids snacks. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we, uh-huh. we use a five-point scale. They love that, like that, indifferent to that, dislike that, and hate that. And we're trying three snacks that probably most of you have had at some other point in your life. Let's start with uh, probably the most popular, the goldfish. So we're eating the old standard goldfish here today. And now goldfish has evolved a ton since we were younger, where it was pretty much just these uh, cheddar flavored. And now I feel like there are 20 varieties of these. Yeah, the pretzel and there's uh, like pizza flavor and there's ranch and there's all kinds of cinnamon now we make a lot of jokes about if someone handed you a snack at a party but i literally think in my life the only time i've ever had a goldfish is when they were in a bowl at a party you know like i can't recall any time i ever had them besides like at some kind of gathering like that where they were out in a community there is a chance i probably had more in the past decade from having young kids um, so there's a chance there could be some in your future because it's just such an easy take on the go thing that most kids, I mm. feel like. Yeah. I had them either as a kid or with my kids, but never like, there's never a party where there's a bowl of goldfish laying out. Now this gold. Except that one time I went to the aquarium. Nice. So this goldfish 
has uh the bag has this character on it named Finn and he's wearing sunglasses which um not to be that guy but why does a fish need sunglasses? He's deep in the ocean. But anyways, if <laughs> Why did Chester Cheetah need them? <laughs> <laughs> because cheetahs actually see the sun sometimes. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um and shout out to our uh real quick shout out to our loyal listener and friend Kurt. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Had a son named Finn. Mad props. And his son actually looks exactly like this goldfish. He came out of the womb with sunglasses. Mhm. Kurt um, told me this may or may not be a, a lie, but Kurt told me he named his son after the goldfish character. His son's middle name is actually Goldfish. Mm-hmm. And his last name is Sleep Number. <laughs> because that's where they made him. So the so Finn has a quote on the back, which is the most boring quote anyone could have. This is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his achievements are most likely to succeed and president of the Share Smiles Foundation. Share Smiles Foundation sounds like one of the, like it sounds like a made up charity that someone you know i mean i guess it is made up (laughs) finn the goldfish sounds like a made-up character too dipshit (laughs) that's not what i meant but whatever (laughs) what did you want him to be in like the pta or something (laughs) i wanted him to i wanted finn to be running the american cancer society Oh. All right, Geiger, um, you are our usual leadoff man. What do you think of the goldfish? I mean, no surprise. Uh, my kids are now kind of out of the goldfish stage, but I'll be honest, the goldfish is just like a solid, like just a solid snack. As kids' snacks go, like you said, they're easy, they're portable. They're the, every, I've never met a kid that didn't like them. The, the regular cheddar cheese flavor, the standard is acceptable. It's not overly cheesy. I think it'd probably be better if it tasted a little more like cheddar. It just kind of tastes like indiscriminate ch- uh, cracker, but it's a solid indifferent to that. I don't think they're great. I don't think they're bad. They're right down the middle. I like them as a parent, uh, as a snack uh, for my, eating them myself. I'm, I'm indifferent. I could take them or leave them, but if there's a bunch laying out that my kids didn't eat, I'll grab a handful and pop them in my mouth. All right. It starts with an indifferent, Chad. Um yeah, I, I guess I guess I was trying to think like what the hell is the point of these things, but I guess the point of these things is just shovel them into your kids' mouths to shut yes. them up. Um, so I guess that's fine. I, I maybe maybe they'd be good as like fodder in like a, a soup or something, you know, like uh, like you pour them into a chicken noodle soup or something like that. But eating them on their own, like why? Why would you ever do this to yourself? They're so like just bland and pointless. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to second an indifferent to that, whatever. (sighs) All right. Um, it's lazy electioneer time. These are just, I think almost the definition of indifferent. They're really pretty bland. Yeah. They don't taste bad. They don't taste good. Uh, we're probably not telling you much about a goldfish that you haven't (laughs) tried before, (laughs) but uh, goldfish with three indifference to start. I, no real surprise. There. I kind of wish we had just been there like, these changed the game. Like, our minds are blown. <laughs> like, have you ever <laughs> eaten a goldfish? Like, run to the store. Don't walk. Run. Wait till someone holds the door open. Finn was right. <laughs> Finn was right when he said these are going to be great. They're great. <laughs> They're amazing. Finn was... <laughs> I just, I just sleep numbered all over my pants. <laughs> I think just with these kids' snacks, we I mean, we could very well just have three lazy electioneers because <laughs> these kids' snacks are just so designed to be uh, bland and right down the middle for kids. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we're going to move next to the Welch's fruit snacks. And uh, again, mo- most of you have probably had these Welch's fruit snacks, uh, real similar to the stuff you ate as a kid. Um and pretty sugary, not like some of these more modern, healthier fruit snacks. Yeah, you open the bag and the smell just like flies out at you. It is made with real fruit, and apparently it's got 100% of your vitamin C, 25% of your vitamin A and E. So there's a little, I mean, very little value to them. They're not very caloric. Each pack is kind of, I don't know, there's what, maybe 15 of these. Um, and there's not too unhealthy. There's no fat or obviously or anything like that. But yeah, they're probably just all, mostly sugar. I'm guessing we actually have these at work as well. Like 
people at my work like to eat them when they're all adults for some reason. What are all the different flavors in here? It just says mixed fruit. I was wondering that. I don't see a list of flavors. I I've... think there's, they have vague shapes on them. Like there's clearly an orange, a strawberry, a raspberry, and a grape. On the box, so they yeah, show a the blueberry, an orange, a strawberry, a grape, a raspberry, a peach, uh, and a, and a trout. That's the last one. Trout is the last flavor. Yeah. Trout. Trout flavor. Not goldfish no. flavor? And Finn is on there saying, no, why me? Hmm. For whatever reason, the grape ones are the only ones that have like a different consistency. If minor grape ones are harder than the rest. Yeah, uh, why yes, are they harder? That's also correct for me. I don't know. They're more molded. There's more shape to them, maybe. I don't know. If you took these and like tried to blind taste them to me, like, uh, hey, what <laughs> flavor is this? And you just put and you just threw one in my mouth from like across the room. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, why do I have to be across the room if you're all night? Because I because I didn't hold the door for you, and so now you're like outside the store trying to chuck them in. And yeah, I I wouldn't be able to tell like what fruit each of these are. Like no, you know, not a chance. generically sweet. Sure. I'd be like, yeah. Do that. Put uh put three randoms. Put your hand in there and grab it. See if you got any shot. I don't know how we would know if we're right or not. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that was definitely strawberry. Let me barf it up <laughs> to verify. Yeah. All right, Chad, you're uh, starting us off. <laughs> I mean, they're fine, but um, I I feel like we just said this, but they're yeah, they're like sort of a little too bland to really um, evoke any kind of emotion from me. Um, they're, they're just kind of there. They're not offensive, but, uh, they're also not good. So <laughs> indifferent to that. You heard it here, folks. Fruit <laughs> snacks, not offensive. All right. <laughs> Unlike those ones you might see at the store with all kinds of racial epitaphs on the box. <laughs> right. These, I didn't like fruit snacks as a kid, really. Uh, never really wanted them, but I do love gummy things. And so as I've gotten older, every time I eat a fruit snack, I just wish it was a gummy. It's just the texture bothers yeah. me a bit more than it does with gummies. But these are fine. I ate actually everything except the grapes. And I generally I was very like disappointed grape in the flavor, grape flavor more than everything else. The, the grape consistency, yeah. Uh, but Chad's right. It's I, I can sit here and eat these mindlessly, but I would never, ever pick them out of the uh, cupboard. So I'm going to go... Another indifferent. So, Geiger, if you uh, are following suit, we may have two lazy electioneers at the door, both so going for different candidates. I liked fruit snacks a lot as a kid. I remember having a bunch. I in fact, I think I remember my favorite one was like sharks, and there would be like a, once in a while there'd be a great white shark in there that was like white and had a different consistency. Well, who gives a fuck? We're not reviewing that. Um, <laughs> Tell us more <laughs> about these sharks. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I actually I like these I think they taste good I mean again they are indiscriminate in flavor so if you try to separate the I mean maybe the yellow one tastes a little more lemony that's maybe the only one I could pick out uh, but getting in my head they're all they all taste just like sugar and vague 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 it's been a while since I dropped a vague on you before uh, some vague fruit <laughs> juice in the fruit snack uh <laughs> <laughs> As I pull my lips back in a rictus here. Uh, you don't need to do that. Apparently I do. You pronounce the word correctly. <laughs> um, so I actually like them. I will give it a like wow. that. They're not great. I'm not going to like, I don't, I mean, again, I'm not going to, I'm an adult. I'm not going to buy fruit snacks for myself to eat all day. But if they're here, I, I don't mind snacking on these. They're, it's like sugar drops. They're fun. I mean, that tastes good. That's good. Uh, they do nothing for you, but they're not all that unhealthy. Uh, I'd probably need about seven of them to actually feel full from a snack. But I guess if there is that, one <laughs> adult human on the planet that is going to give these a like, Dad, it's you. We've we have found we have found <laughs> that man. <laughs> uh, like Bobby Welch might from the Welch family, <laughs> just for branding's sake. Well, something had to get a like today, so maybe the Welches will end up. Um, the champion of the day, but the Animal Crackers will have something to say about that after our segment. Uh, we recently, on a recent episode, um, talked about some life hacks, and uh, it was a popular segment. 
that oh we got a lot of great one. feedback on that thank and you all for writing in yeah about how much you loved it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh I'm actually kind of proud that all your lives are so much easier now. <laughs> no, we uh this is a similar kind of segment comes from the same site, but we're going to since since kids love peanut butter so much and not because we thought we were going to do the peanut butter episode today, <laughs> but because kids love peanut butter. <laughs> not at all related. <laughs> we're going to talk about different uses for peanut butter. So you, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna tell you guys some uses for peanut butter. Uh, wait till we get Can to the peanut butter app. We have an not at all unrelated kids <laughs> competition we put together. I'm gonna te- I'm gonna we're gonna go through some uses for kids. <laughs> you spread the kids on your sleep number bed. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Going in a dark whoa. direction, <laughs> fucking weirdo. <laughs> Don't combine those jokes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to list off 10, 10 uses for peanut butter that you may not have thought of in the past. And you tell me, is this something you'd consider doing or maybe you've done it before? So I'll start with a pretty common one, uh, to distribute meds. So to give medication to kids or a dog. Is that something you've done before? Yes, uh, to, that's either that or cheese is my preferred way to give my dog medication. Got you. I shook my head. Couldn't you hear? Uh <laughs> <laughs> the visual medium, right? Uh, you didn't shake it loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> rattle, rattle, rattle. Yeah, she yeah, no, be rattling uh, with that like tiny brain and that big giant skull just bouncing around. All right, now it got personal. I'm not holding the door for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, for uh, I, I, I'm with Chad. I usually use a piece of cheese or like a little like the end of a hot dog or something. But yeah, peanut butter is also a way to do that. Pretty simply. Um, how about, um, another, okay. None of these are common anymore. Oh, I've used this something similar to fix a scratch on a CD. I've heard that you can what? put like huh? tooth, toothpaste or peanut butter or banana, like if a CD scratched up a bunch and you rub it on the back and then wash it off, it fixes the scratches. A banana? I've actually done that before. You've done that with <laughs> peanut butter? I've done it with a banana. Oh. I've done it with a with a toothpaste, and I've done it with. Banana. I'm just picturing putting this CD coated in peanut butter into your CD player. Just, whoa, <laughs> just peanut butter squishing out the slot. <laughs> the CD player just starts going nom nom nom, and then it burps. <laughs> peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. All right. How about what? A, how does that work? What is the science like? How does a banana fix a CD? <laughs> that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fix the CD with the banana. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I ran it out of glue. I'll just use a banana. <laughs> Is that a broken CD? I know. <laughs> it's a CD you stick it together with dried peanut butter, right? <laughs> <laughs> You go to the, uh, okay. you go to the about... CD factory and like it's just a bunch of bananas like all getting shoved together and then CDs <laughs> come out the other side. Yeah, CDs are essentially plantain How chips. A... <laughs> How about a shaving cream? Peanut butter? Peanut Would butter and shave shaving cream? Butter? No! <laughs> Why? Yeah, you guys are fat fucks. You can use to shave with I peanut might butter. sweat peanut butter, but I'm not going to shave with it. <laughs> I can't imagine. I, that, I feel like it wouldn't no, work that's... correctly. I mean, that has to be creamy peanut butter, right? Like chunky peanut butter <laughs> yeah. just is going to get really caught in the razor. You know what that is, Novak? <laughs> that's dudes that were like trying to cover why the, someone found them uh, with peanut butter all over their balls while the dog was licking them. Like, I started shaving and the dog came in. Oops. <laughs> It, that honestly, that okay. sounds like a YouTube challenge. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Where somebody's like, "All right, I'm good today. I'm gonna shave with peanut butter." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like and subscribe. Jack's Jack, got the default <laughs> dumb guy impression. Apparently, <laughs> just the mouth. I'm gonna shave with peanut butter and fix CDs with banana. <laughs> this guy's just trapped in a Trader Joe's. He can't go get anything fixed. <laughs> Now I'm going to build a nuclear bomb with salad. (laughs) One comment on the bottom from Chad. This is going to be great. (laughs) All right. Odor eliminator. What do you think? Oh, I I have heard that. Like if you're, um, oh no, wait, is it if your dog gets sprayed by a skunk or whatever, you have to use like peanut butter (laughs) or like tomato juice, you moron. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, slapping your dog in peanut butter. Now you've got a sticky, smelly dog. 
<laughs> He's like trying to lick himself nonstop. Uh, so wait a minute. What, into what what order? Like open a jar of peanut butter and put it next to like your garbage can or something? Ah, I don't know. I didn't have the page open anymore, but uh, <laughs> so I, that might have been a good idea to read what they said. I just was writing them down. Use your imagination. The odor of a non-peanut butter smelling house. Does your house smell like a normal house? Use peanut butter to make it smell like peanut butter instead. Are you one of the Keebler elves? Okay, no. Great. <laughs> I'm going to find it. All right. Odor I'm going to make my house smell like peanut butter by using <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> All right. I found the All page. Right. After cooking fish for dinner, your house smells fishy for days. Why don't any air fresheners cover up that stench? Guess what works perfectly? That's right. Peanut butter. Put a tablespoon of smooth peanut butter in the frying pan once your dinner's been taken out and fry it for a minute or two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought they were going to say, like, take a spoon, scoop out the peanut butter, and start <laughs> whipping it against all your walls. <laughs> no no smell is greater than roller. mixing the faint smell of fried fish with peanut butter. Lubricant. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your face. Nope. <laughs> oh, that now that th that Would was one of the features butter? of the sleep number bed was that they had like a peanut butter dispenser off to the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To shoot all over your dick. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it just said perfect for holding the back door on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, Novak, you haven't said much. Have you used that one? Constantly. It's an odor eliminator, too. Is that why uh, <laughs> your wife used to call you Skippy around the house? <laughs> Is that why yours calls you Jif? <laughs> a Jif Crunchy, she calls me. There's another reason for yeah. it. Like Chad <laughs> asked, I don't lube with Crunchy. That'd be problematic. Uh, all right. Uh, a price sticker removal. Haven't you ever had a uh, a sticker a price sticker when you got home from the store and you couldn't get that son of a bitch off. I'm always like, so you rubbed peanut butter on it? this price sticker. <laughs> and rubbing the peanut butter on it, to be clear, improved the situation? <laughs> Less sticky then? I, I, yeah, I, I have a jar of stuff called Goof Off that mm -hmm. I always use to get rid of like those little sticker residues or something. But uh, maybe mm. instead of Goof Off, I should just be using, uh, you know, peanut butter. You can use peanut butter to uh, goof off and to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect, uh, perfect. All right. Uh, windshield cleaner. What? Windshield cleaner? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't see how. Oh, yeah, that's all the peanut butter I left on the windshield. Now, now it's starting to sound like this is this is how the, like the world works in the fictional land of like Candyland or something, right. where it's like instead of windshield wipers, we've got you know <laughs> we've got peanut butter sprays on our cars. The you dumb know, guy apparently like is from Candyland. <laughs> yeah. It seems like nothing short of a hard scrub will loosen those bug remains off your windshield after a road trip. Peanut butter to the rescue! Rub some peanut butter into these stubborn spots and let sit for ten minutes. Spray it off with a hose. <laughs> Here's an idea. Use soap and then spray it off with a hose. Fucking moron. S spray it off with a hose of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> that applied jelly and bread. Bug sandwich. Yeah, the next the the next one's hosing down your windshield, <laughs> so that's enough. Um all right, three more. Wood scratch repair. You know all those pesty scratches in the wood yeah. that you have? Put peanut butter on them because it's brown, I guess, and you won't notice that this crash. Every road over time, it'll just stay there forever. It's definitely not going to attract ants. <laughs> For those scratches, I gotta read this one. For those scratches on your wooden furniture, door jams, banisters, and more, <laughs> try some peanut butter. Apply smooth peanut butter on the scratch. <laughs> Let it soak in for 30 minutes to an hour. Rub it away with a cloth, and the scratch will be almost impossible to see. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yes. Until your friend comes over and climbs up your stick <laughs> and gets a handful of peanut butter. I have a banister coated with peanut butter. No one noticed until our hand was full of it. What the fuck? <laughs> or they can't. They, it's like, why can't I grab? Like, why did you lube up your banister? I can't even grab it. My hand just keeps slipping off. Is your boat leaking? Patch it up with peanut uh, butter. All right, two more. Uh, moisturize your hair. 
the fuck? Hmm. That sounds like an old so, wives' tale. Use it as shampoo, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me guess the the last one: rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is the best because this is a problem <laughs> that is plaguing the country. <laughs> right, and there must be a solution. <laughs> Okay, it's ice cream ice cream cone sealant. <laughs> so <when you> have... <laughs> As, instead of using caulk like most normal people. <laughs> you weren't far off with like patching up a boat. I That's guess. Yeah, it's a banana boat, a banana split boat. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the uh, explanation. Before loading up your cone with ice cream, put a scoop of peanut butter in the bottom. It will keep melt keep melting ice cream from dripping out the bottom and will be a yummy treat in the bottom of the cone. So that's not actually a bad idea, but just the way it's phrased makes me think there's a hole in your cone. <laughs> and you're like, like frantically like, get me the peanut butter! <laughs> you're like just splashing and like trying your best. To... <laughs> I can't let any drop go to waste. So there's some nice peanut butter hacks if you have uh, some spare peanut butter in your hands and a buggy windshield. <laughs> you can use those <laughs> oh you forgot one other list or one other use of uh peanut butter is to make a list to use in our peanut butter themed episode <laughs> but uh i guess we fucked that one up and now we're using it in the kids episode <laughs> <laughs> it's my list was made of peanut butter <laughs> all right one snack remains the barnum's animal crackers and i don't think you're a red-blooded american kid if you haven't had a box of animal crackers at some point in your life you know what i kind of miss on this box is the string that went in the top i don't know how much you guys had animal crackers as a kid but they used to come with a white string across the top they did yeah which was much more fun than this hand. So you could pull it like a train right or something that the because they were like train cars in the circus and i might I might be making this up, but I think I had read also that they changed not too long ago. The animals used to be in cages and then they <laughs> they took them out of cages because, uh, I don't know, PETA or some shit. Who knows? Yeah, the old box was like an old school circus wagon that had the bars on the side. And that's why it had the white strings. So you could pull it along like a train kind of thing. Mm. But now, yeah, I think you're right. They wanted the animals to be free. And then eat well, as crackers. Barnum is a circus, like Barnum and Bailey, right? right. So. Yeah, I, I circus, like the circus, the notoriously like most cruel place for animals, other than I don't know, uh, like poachers places. But, anyways, whatever. So your available animals in this box are lion, seal, hippopotamus, koala, and elephant. I don't think if I had that on the box, I would have been able to tell some of these Ooh, deformed. It's super hard to tell. Yeah. They all look like <laughs> this one. Know. This one could be anything from an ant eater to like uh, just a bowl of melted peanut butter. I definitely have one clear koala, and the face looks hilarious. Just like these melty eyes and nose with a lopsided smile on its face. But after that, I couldn't tell what these other two yeah, are. I ninety percent of mine are just a four legged animal. It looks like something <laughs> I drew. Like this is how I would draw a four-legged animal yeah. looking sideways. Oh, this one's a sheep. I have one that I swear to God looks like a headless kangaroo. It does not match up with any of the things they on this box. Is something? it too much for us to be like demanding high quality artistry in our snacks? Not at all. Does that make us elitist snobs? Well, if they're not gonna taste good. Now, do you guys prefer? Maybe do you remember as kids? Do you prefer these? We have the plain animal crackers. There's the version that has like the pink and white frosting on it with like the hard candy sprinkles or is, whatever. Those are, uh, I like those. I those don't. Are, good. are those the ones? Um, they're made. They're made by like they come in like a pink and white bag, right? And I think that, what's the company that makes those? Um, I think it's Keebler. I thought it was Keebler. And like yeah, they're free. It's a frost animal cookie. That... Pink and white animal. They're probably cookies. both Nabisco. I would assume. They're the. Uh, Oh, Mother's. Yeah, Mother's Original Circus Animal Cookies. So there there was a, yeah, so there was a thing um, <laughs> maybe like 10 years ago or something where they were, the company that makes them was like going out of business and they announced that they were going out of business and my wife loves the circus animal cookies. And so <laughs> she sent me to every grocery store and like every Target within like a 10 mile radius of my house to like buy as many of them 
as I could so that we could put them in the freezer. <laughs> so that like, cause she was worried. She's like, I'm not, I love those cookies and I'm never going to get to eat them again. <laughs> and so I went to all of these stores and like bought all these crackers or all these cookies. We had bags of them in our freezer. And then like a month later, it was announced that like Keebler was buying mothers and was going to like keep the cookies in production. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are we going to do with all these cookies now? We got to get something straight. Um, how big is your fucking freezer? <laughs> I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> Every episode, something we eat is in your freezer. <laughs> you have reams of Girl Scout cookies, frozen foods, animal breast crackers. Milk. Also, do you have a... a... Breast milk. Yeah. Breast milk. <laughs> Do you have a freezer that isn't devoted to cookies? <laughs> so it, it th this was back uh, when I was still like living the bachelor lifestyle, like I was living by myself, and my fridge. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> that crazy bachelor lifestyle loaded with animal crackers. <laughs> I didn't have. Animal I, animal didn't, I, I, I didn't have shit else in my freezer because like I don't really eat frozen food very much and stuff. So it was like my fridge was just a barren wasteland. It would have like two gallons of milk and a loaf of bread and butter. And that was like all that was ever in my fridge. So there's plenty of space in the freezer. It was all only ice cube trays. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I well, yes, that. officer. It's totally normal that my freezer is just full of <laughs> animal cracker cookies that only children would be interested in and nothing mm -hmm. else. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, these taste exactly like, um, you guys remember those like McDonald's cookies from when we were little that had like, um, yeah. They're just like the yep. shortbread McDonald's cookies. It tastes exactly like these to me, unless my memory's yeah. off. No, you're right. Oh, it's kind of hard, actually. Uh, that's what the sleep number lady said to me. <laughs> um, I definitely some nostalgia factor. I think these are the these are my favorite of the things we've eaten today, no doubt. But I'm debating whether they deserve a like that. Are either one of you guys sure? Because I'm still on the line right here. <laughs> I need to eat a few. I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Who's sure I don't of the know All right, go for it. Okay. I need more time. This is a dislike for me. I don't like them that much. They're, there's a weird... I don't... As we've covered over here, I don't love like just regular old shortbreadish style cookies. That, these are not nearly as buttery as the ones you guys have reviewed before. <laughs> uh, even though there's animal butts on them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they there's a the 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 sweetness to them is weird like the aftertaste is bad like i'm sitting here now having eaten three of them and i can still taste them and i don't like the taste there's something weird about the aftertaste i don't they're not like a good consistency they're just kind of hard and i am going to dock them a little points because i can't tell what fucking animal they are so i will give them a dislike that that's uh, that's it for me. All right, uh, Chad. I think they're good. I actually really like them. <laughs> I think they're pretty tasty. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, there are better cookies out there. I I don't really go out of my way to buy these ever, but when they're there, I think they're pretty good. Um, they've they've had them at my work at my office sometimes, and I'll grab a box of them there. Uh, so yeah, I think these are good. I'm giving them a like that. Hmm. Definitely my favorite thing we had today. <sighs> All right. Geiger, I think you what you said struck a chord with me. The aftertaste is not great. There is an animal cracker that I like a lot better than these. I think it's like Stoffers or something like that. They look even less like animals, and they're a bit crunchier. Uh, but I think they're a little better. The taste, of, the flavor is a little better. I feel like these don't taste like exactly like they did when we were kids. Like it's, it's maybe like a different recipe, or maybe it was thirty years ago. I'm not sure <laughs> which one that is. But. <laughs> Hmm. Um, hold on, hold on. Let's check the tapes. I'm what gonna... did you give these when you were five? Uh, indifferent. <laughs> Go back to episode negative three thousand two hundred twenty-eight. What was your rating? <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go th with my third indifferent of the day, uh, and so we kind of spread the the gamut there, which is gonna make these Welch's fruit snacks the kids' champion. Which a little surprising. Definitely a little surprised by that. Um, but all of them were very much in the same ballpark, um, with each other. So, um, which, uh, Geiger, which, uh, places should our listeners go to contact us? Uh, the sleep number store. You're going to let us know what your sleep number is. Novak, what's your sleep number? 
what are the my choices? Is it like one through a hundred or one through ten? Um, is it one through sixty nine? I, I think I've definitely been in the store. <laughs> <Turn right now. laughs> yeah, for real, it's one through ten. But uh, for purposes of this question, you can say <laughs> pi negative one. I don't know. <laughs> What's the firm? Is firm one or is firm ten? It's a movie. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, one is the firmest and ten is softest. Let's pretend. If that's the way it was, I'd be probably like a two and a half. Like, I definitely prefer wow. a firmer bed. And that's probably because I had like some back issues in the past. And so that's what is most comfortable to me. What Are you guys more of a hard or a firm or a soft? Agree with me. Um, hard, firm, or stiff? What do you guys think? <laughs> do you want what's behind door number one or door number one? <laughs> I'll see your option. Um, I like I like a really really soft bed. Um, like we we like I mentioned earlier, we have the Tempur Pedic, and we got like they have a couple different Tempur Pedics, but they're all pretty soft. And I think we got the second softest one um, out of out of all the Tempur Pedics, and. That's also a lot. Well, a lot of times my complaint when we travel, because like a lot of other countries, people around the world, they they really like hard beds. Like I remember we were in Italy and just everywhere, like in Italy, it's basically like sleeping on stone slabs. Like they just love these like hard beds there. And it drove us crazy. What about you, Geiger? Yeah, I like a softer bed. I, I don't know. I'm at the point now where if I sleep in a bed that's not my own, even if it's not like an uncomfortable bed, my back will still be sore when I get up. I don't know if it's just like not mm-hmm. used to a bed that's not mine, but our bed is fairly soft. Um, so I would probably say, I don't know, six or seven, if I had to guess what level they are. Uh, that or a four as in on all fours. That's a sex joke again. But uh <laughs> Yeah, no, something somewhere, somewhere the in the middle. Kids episode, you pervert. Uh huh. Sorry, <laughs> blamed your seductress salesperson. But um, yeah, no, some, my sleep some, number is my sleep number is a five because that's how many people are in my polycule because we're all banging on the bed. Polycule, right? Excuse me. Isn't that like uh, what's that? Who multi person? Who's polycule? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> is she hot? <laughs> That's the right term. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, back to it. <laughs> you kicked into me for the social media thing. I should probably wrap it up. So um, you can get back to us with your sleep number or any feedback on these kids' snacks. If you remembered them differently when you were a kid, if you could please help us identify these animals, that would be of great help. Um, you can get in touch with us at you tried at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach out to us on our Facebook group, You Tried That, uh, Twitter, hashtag You Tried That, and then you can also listen to the podcast on YouTube, Instagram. If you can't listen to it there, you can comment on it. Uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud, anywhere you can get, normally get uh, your podcast, you can get ours, and I hope you do, and thanks for listening. So just as a sign of these snacks, my wife heard the podcast was wrapping up, walked over, made a motion like, <laughs> hand me the snacks, because she always wants to try the snacks we ate. Picked up the bag of goldfish, made a, a what the fuck look to me. <laughs> like, what, really? Picked up the Welch's snacks, got even more upset. And then picked up the animal crackers, tossed them down, and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Does she only her. allow you to do this podcast to get free food? Is that what she's in it for? <laughs> more or less, <laughs> yes. She listens to none of it, but eats every bit of it. <laughs> Sounds like she has a much more discerning palate than any of us. Which, uh, so when you had a lunch as a kid, what was, what drink did you usually have? Did you have a juice box? I think it was always milk. I milk. always had milk. Yeah. We got it. Even when I had a bag lunch, I got like a little pint of, or what not a pint. <laughs> Jesus. A five years old drinking a pint of milk at lunch. Uh, <laughs> glug, 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 hold I on. A, I had a fifth of milk. <laughs> <laughs> and I was lactose intolerant, so I probably shat myself. Um, that little tiny whatever it is. Quart. Not quart. Jesus. I don't know. My... Cup? Yeah, sure. Quart, also pretty big. <laughs> I had a couple gallons of milk at lunch. How about you, Noah? Uh, yeah, I feel like juice boxes, Capri Sun. Um, I mean, I spent... I probably cost months off my life trying to get the Capri Sun straw in to the Capri Sun, <laughs> which is always. And then apparently that you were supposed to, there was another way you could put it in the bottom of the Capri Sun, which 
that life hack, I guess. No, early life <laughs> hack. <laughs> it's another way that you could uh, put peanut butter all over your Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's to Red repair the holes on in it, man. Wipe it away, and then it'll just like pour it directly into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be having a peanut butter episode soon. Uh, <laughs> it's a little surprise. Uh, but some upcoming episodes we've got. Uh, Chad, let's start. Let's give a little preview. Don't usually do this. What are some upcoming ups we got? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I don't have the doc open. Wait, Jesus no, is you coming? just sent me the fucking snack. <laughs> you oh. just sent me these snacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I sent you... Yeah, we're going to do... Uh, there's a new Reese's um, Chocolate Lovers and a Reese's Peanut Butter Lovers. So we're going to do those as a show-off. I think we got an M&M tournament coming up. That's very exciting. Um, some Little Debbie snacks coming up down the road after that. Should be good. Stay All tuned. Right. All right. And uh, so we'll be seeing you next time when we'll be trying out three brand new snacks. Deuces. Yep. Yep.